Okay, I'm making a recording, so let's have the side conversations. Minimal, please. Minimal. Minimal side conversations. Text. I'm making a recording. Minimal side conversations. Minimal. It's for students that aren't in the room. Like Henry and... We have four, four well, students. students. That's what Miss Meyer said. There were four kids in there. It's for anybody in my algebra classes that's absent. I put it on that. Help! I was absent. I need my video now. Right? Hi, oh. Henry. Hi, Henry. Okay. So, we have the notes you guys should have taken yesterday. Clearly, there were some shortcuts I was not aware of, and it's fine. However you get there is, is all that I'm, I'm concerned about. Okay. So, and then... On the next page, I had you guys, we talked about doing the linear regression for this situation, length of a boat and the cost, right? I said we kind of rounded this to 5 and we estimated this to negative 38. And then I asked you to do a linear regression down here for number 27. Did everybody perform that linear regression? Yes. Okay. This one wasn't as easy to round to, like, nice whole numbers. Um, if Right, so here's what I have on my. You just rounded it to four? Yeah. That's fine. Oh, that was a negative one. I did the same thing, but I just didn't put, I just forgot to put the negative symbol. So I got everything except I rounded it. So what we'll do is we'll change this to point one. And we'll change this to about four. Yep. So then my equation is slightly less chaotic. So we'll have negative 0.1x plus 4. Okay. And this was for how long you watch television compared to your grade point average. Okay. Yes, sir. Because we estimated it, right? So it's an estimation of our slopes, right? So I guess up here, I should also change these to estimations, right? Okay, so let's go ahead now and finish answering these questions for B, C, D, and E. So B says, identify and interpret the correlation coefficient. We haven't talked about that, right? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it now through going over this. Okay, so correlation coefficient is telling us how strong of a relationship something has, right? So if it's really strong, it's going to be close to 1 or negative 1 on the spectrum. Okay, so let's go ahead and give ourselves a little lesson down here. Correlation coefficient. Okay, so we have a scale here. We've got zero in the middle, we've got one, and we've got negative one. Okay, the closer it is to the one or the negative one, the stronger it is. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative one, it's just how close is that value to one. If it's really close, like say 0 0.9, 0 0.95, 0 0.8, that's a pretty strong correlation. If it's like at 0 0.2, not a strong correlation, right? And that would be a topic of something that really has nothing to do with each other, like your shoe size and the number of siblings you have. There's no correlation to those things. There's no connection. There's no relationship. So if we were to actually try to do a scatter plot and a trend line and linear regression, we would have very weird data, and it would say these are not even closely related. Okay. So again, the stronger it is to the one or the negative one, the, co the um, correlation coefficient is stronger or weaker. So when I look back at my graph for this, let me see here. Because you're probably thinking, well, how do I know that? Okay, so if you look here, do you see this R? That is my correlation coefficient for this information. Okay, so for B, I'm 
going to say R equals 0 0.94, right? And that's a strong correlation. Okay, because it's really close to the whole number one. That means that there's definitely a connection between the length of a boat and how expensive it is. Okay. I mean, Caleb, you're asking a lot. I have no idea. That's why I use the app. It just knows. Somebody performed the, you know, the the coding for this, they knew the math that needed to happen, so that just does it. There are tiny I didn't know if it was like part of the equation or it was just like common sense. It's not common sense. Right? There's actually a lot of math that goes into it. Okay. And we're not going to worry about those values right now. Okay. So then part C says, oops, let's put C down here. Interpret the slope and y intercept of the line of best fit. Okay, so what does that slope represent? Well, our, we said our slope was 5. So that's like saying 5 over 1. So fi every 5 what, 1 something happens. Yeah, so the, every extra inch, every extra foot of a boat adds $5,000 to the cost, right? So. That's a lot of money. Come on, I think you know what Okay. So every extra foot of the boat adds five thousand dollars. Or you could have said it costs five thousand dollars more for every extra. I mean, there's lots of different ways you could word it, but you need to understand what the one stands for and what the five stands for for the slope. Because remember, it's 5 over 1 is our slope. So technically, if people were like this, it would be how many inches, how many feet above average they're at. Maybe. Because, like, if they started to add it, it would be like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's look at part D here. Approximate the cost of a sailboat that is 20 feet long. Okay, so what am I going to do here? How am I going to do that? I have, I have my linear equation. I know I want it a certain length of a sailboat. So what am I what math thing am I gonna do here? Plug in twenty five. I'm definitely gonna substitute. So I've got my linear equation five x minus thirty-eight. I'm going to say y equals five times twenty minus thirty-eight. My calculator here. I mean I should be able to do this in my head, right? So y equals 62. So how much is a 20-foot sailboat going to cost me? Yep. Do you want to know the best kind of boat? A friend's boat. You don't want your own boat. You want a friend with a boat. Right? You don't have to do all the maintenance. You don't have to pay for gas. You don't have to put it in. Nope. You don't have to pay for storage in the winter. You don't have to pay for upkeep. Boats are very expensive. I just don't like the water. And then we. Like, I like it, but. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now let's do part E. Okay, we have one more, one more part here. Voices off, please. We have one more part here. It says, predict the length of a sailboat that costs $147,000. So what am I going to do here? How can I use that same linear equation to figure out what the length would be? Put what into Y. Just 147, right? Because Y is in thousands of dollars. So we're going to say 147 equals 5X minus 38. And then we're going to solve that. One forty seven plus thirty eight. So we get one hundred eighty five equals five X.
x equals 37. So, no, divide by 5. I'm going to put a little squiggle here so we don't get these two problems confused. So what does that 37 stand for? 37,000 feet. Oh, no, 37 feet. 37 feet. Okay, so I'm going to have you guys work on answering all of the all of the the rest of problem 27 by yourself okay so we've got hours spent watching television average grade point we already have the linear equation okay um, the cor correlation coefficient for this one which you probably don't have because you probably got rid of that graph I will tell you as soon as I can get my had to work. R equals negative 0 0.96. Right, so that was the correlation coefficient. So somebody tell me, is that a strong correlation or a weak correlation? It is strong, right? Because it's a wrong one. Either one or negative one, right? So it's a strong correlation. So this was part of A. I just didn't have you guys do that because you didn't know the correlation coefficient yet. So that's still part of A's question. It says, identify and interpret the correlation coefficient. Yeah, we did. So up on number 20, B was separate from, like the correlation coefficient was separate from slope and y-intercept, but for number 27, they're combined into one part. So that's why there's only four questions instead of the five. So go ahead and work on this. Okay, so this, the slope and y-intercept. Okay, so let's think about what, our, okay, so our slope is negative, point, negative 0 0.1 over 1, right? What does the x, what do the y values stand for in our graph, or in our table? What do the y values stand for? Grade point average. What do the x values stand for? Hours. So I have a negative 0.01 grade point per every hour I watch TV, right? So my grade point average is 0 0.1 less for every hour of TV watching. And by TV, they mean Netflix binging. You know who you are. You know who you are. I watch YouTube. Okay. That's even worse. I play games. You know, what if it's mystery? If it's in your mind, you're trying to do something mystery. Most likely, you're trying to solve mystery. But you're not working on your studies. I'm thinking about someone who can work on What if you're going into, um, if you're going into, you want to go into, um, FBI. Like Forensics. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. I don't think That's I would a stress. Specific yeah. forensic details of stuff for okay, let's go ahead and do part C together. Okay, so we know the hours of television, right, for part C. So we have to approximate 
their GPA. So we're going to say y equals negative 0 0.1 plus 4. Oh, negative 0 0.1 times 14 because they watch 14 hours of television. You wouldn't think about it, but a TV show, an episode is about 30 minutes to an hour. Yeah. And so if you think you watch a whole season in a day, times that by seven. Oh, oh, oh. I did oh, not oh. watch a whole season in a day. I have, no. Okay, so the GPA is going to be about 2.6, right? Because they're spending all their time watching. And I know 14 hours a week, you guys are probably thinking, that's not a lot at all. No, 14 hours a week. Oh, that's really low, actually. This is, guys, this is material long before Netflix was invented, so they're not giving enough credit to your stay power. Right? This is back when you actually just had to watch a TV. I get better grades and watch more TV than a lot of you. Just call me Okay, so part D says, do you think there's a casual relationship between time spent watching television and grade point? Meaning, do you think there's really a connection? I mean, hypothetically. Meaning, like, is there a connection? In this situation with the data they've given us, yes. Yes. Based on the data, we could say yes, but based on your own experience? No. 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 At least so not unless you're watching. spending all your time on it. So I mean, I, I, I still watch like TV, TV and I finish all my stuff, like everything is still like even on my You just have to, it depends on the person. Yeah. So yeah, do you have your other stuff done and you're just like filling time or are you avoiding anything school related? Right? So it definitely depends on the person. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a practice page now. I do my homework at 12. So if you are at home, this would be a link. I make sure I have an alarm set on each desk. Oh, I have an alarm set. It's just there's an ignore button. I actually started asking for the consciousness to be grabbing my phone and pressing snooze. Yeah. So I just fall, so I've started setting like an alarm every five minutes for a total I do it, of two I, hours. I do it in my sleep sometimes. It doesn't even wake me up. I just turn off the alarm. That yeah, I know. I do the same thing, and it's annoying. Hey, real quick. Hey, guys, I would like to finish the video for at home viewers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're still there. They're still watching the video. Hopefully. Okay. So on um, questions one and two, um, all you have to do is find the equation of the line and then interpret the correlation coefficient. Remember that correlation coefficient is that R on the data. Question three, um, you have to do the same thing. Equation of the line, best fit, correlation, and then actually interpret and approximate a number. Kind of like we just did in our notes. So you guys can go back and look at that. And then the back side is exactly the same except different numbers and things. So you have six problems to work on. Okay? Sound good? Okay, say bye to our friends at home. Bye! bye.